G'day, my name is Kev. My channel is all about building and maintaining ponds on a budget. If that is something that interests you, please like and subscribe. Today I want to talk a little bit about pond oxygen and why it's an important ingredient for pond success. Everything inside the pond relies on oxygen to thrive, from the fish to the tiny bacteria and microorganisms that keep the water clean and clear. But first let's talk about the fish. Fish need oxygen to survive. They use their gills to remove oxygen in the water. The oxygen is then moved into the bloodstream where it is distributed throughout the body. Without an adequate supply of oxygen in the water, their health will deteriorate and they will become stressed. Stressed is a sure path to a premature death for a fish. A sure sign that there isn't enough oxygen for the fish is if you see them gulping for air at the surface. There is actually a limit to the amount of oxygen that can be present in water. You may have heard of this referred to as the saturation point. The saturation point is the limit to how much oxygen can fit in the water. And this limit will vary depending on water temperature. Fish require a certain amount of oxygen be present at all times. Not all fish require the same amounts of oxygen. As a general rule, large fish will need more oxygen than smaller fish. Also, what type of environment a fish originally comes from will play a major role in how much oxygen they need. For example, trout are found in fast flowing rivers with lots of oxygen. You can buy test kits that will test for the amount of oxygen in the water, but for most of us, monitoring the fish will suffice. Like I said, if the fish are at the surface gulping for air, it's a sure sign there isn't enough oxygen in the water. Now, in higher temperatures, the water can hold less oxygen. So if you're going to test your oxygen levels, during summer is the best, as it will let you know if the levels are adequate. Also at higher temperatures, there's a lot of other demands on the oxygen that's in the pond. The fish are more active, they're eating more, the bacteria are more active, breaking down waste, the plants are growing. All these things lead to more oxygen in the pond being consumed. But don't plants produce oxygen? <laughs> That's true, they do, during the daylight hours. When you've been looking for pond plants, you've probably seen lots of plants that are labelled oxygenators for ponds. What they don't tell you is that at night, plants actually become oxygen consumers and not producers. Now, in a wildlife pond with a small amount of fish or no fish, this isn't really a problem. But if it's a dedicated fish pond, plants alone aren't gonna produce enough oxygen for the fish to live to their fullest potential. And this is pretty much the main reason I recommend people don't try and run their ponds with solar equipment. At the time when you need the circulation and agitation, you're getting none from the solar pump. There's so many good quality low volt pond pumps that can easily be extended to reach even the furthest corner in most standard backyards. And even if that's not an option, you can run air through a hose for hundreds of metres from an air pump if necessary. Now, don't get me wrong, I love solar. I've got rooftop solar. It's just when it comes to the equipment like pumps and aerators, they really need to be running 24 seven. So now we know why the fish need oxygen and why we can't reliably count on plants to oxygenate the water. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the bacteria and the microorganisms and why they need oxygen. So first the bacteria. Good bacteria is so important to a healthy pond. Bacteria convert ammonia and nitrite into nitrate. This is a process that keeps the water safe for the fish. For this process to occur, the bacteria consume oxygen. If there isn't enough oxygen in the water, this process can stall or start to reverse. <laughs> it's quite a complex little system. I don't wanna to go too much into the science because <laughs> it gets quite confusing. But the bottom line is keeping the oxygen levels within the water nice and high ensures that there is enough oxygen for all these processes to occur. There are other types of bacteria that can thrive in low to no oxygen zones and also have an important role to play. 
but for this video I'm not going to go into them. Next we have decomposing organic materials like leaves and fish poo. These are being broken down by microorganisms as well as bacteria. Again this process consumes oxygen. Without a good amount of oxygen the process will slow down considerably. This pond here sits under a Japanese maple and it, so it ends up with heaps of leaf material in it. Even with a skimmer it's impossible to get it all. So making sure there's plenty of oxygen available helps this process, ensures that I don't end up with just too much buildup of sludge over the winter. Oxygen's useful as well in deeper ponds uh, to maintain a more constant water temperature. This is less of a concern in most backyard ponds. And for some, the use of an aerator in winter can be helpful to keep a hole in the ice. <laughs> this is an issue for me here in Australia. And you should know you can't really over oxygenate the pond. Uh, any excess oxygen will just return to the atmosphere once you reach the saturation point. For me, a good waterfall or a pond slash aquarium air compressor is the easiest and cost effective ways to get plenty of oxygen into the pond. So that's about it for this video. I hope it's been helpful. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.